All right, so I figured I'd give a little tour of the safari van. I know uh, CP Tolayak was uh, thinking it would be kind of cool, so I figured, what the hell, I'll take a video of it, uh, a little tour video of it, and and go over a few things about it. Uh, one of the little background behind it, my uncle bought it brand new in 99. Um, he, up until about last year, what was it, be 2021, he gave it to me because he bought a new truck. So, uh, so I said, yeah, you know, of course I'll take it. I was going to offer to buy it, but he just said, screw it, you can have it. But, so, I'm the second owner. I've done a few things to it, uh, that kind of help it make it more drivable and, and, uh, whatnot. So, yeah, so here it is. Yesterday I painted the wheels on it because they were getting pretty flaky and gross looking. Body on it's not too bad. It's got a couple paint chips on it uh, that are out, but nothing, no holes or huge dents or anything. Uh, I think the hood took most of the beating on it. It's got, you know, probably don't show up as well on camera, but it's got the most, f you know, little flakes and stuff on, coming off of it. Uh, after I got it, pretty much one of the first things I did when I got it, I painted the bumper, uh, painted the grill, but some of it kind of came off from all the times I washed it with pressure washer. Probably end up just getting a new grill eventually. Um, I upgraded the headlights. Uh, here, let's see if this one shows up better. So it's actually got LED. Uh, not your cheap eBay LED. These are actual truck light ones that are used on commercial trucks. Uh, I know we used them on trash trucks and uh, a couple other, you know, like uh, boards that we had. So they work really well. I, I really like them. They're super bright. Uh, they beat the hell out of the old glass bulbs that these use normally. Um, so if you got, I think they're four by six or four by eight or something like that if they're not cheap i'll tell you that right now uh for a set of these it's like 600 bucks or like 300 dollars a piece it's stupid expensive but you sometimes you can find them used and save save a few bucks on them but uh yeah those are those were the biggest upgrade i did far as drivability goes bumper paint's holding up better than the grill paint Pressed because that's the one that gets all the bugs and rock chips. Yep, there's the wheels looking pretty good. Paint cured and washed them already once. Uh, this thing might look a little big on camera, but really it's not that big. I mean, it's probably a hair longer than I would say a Ford Transit. Uh, maybe a little, maybe about a half a foot to a foot. Um, naturally, it's not as tall, but this, you know, the great thing about these are they're, you know, body on frame like a pickup truck. Uh, my sticker collection that's that I started on the back. I <laughs> there there was a big Harley sticker on here. I fought to get all the glue off of that my uncle put on it. Uh, Here's the inside. It's I haven't cleaned the inside in a while. It's definitely due, but doors open up. You can unhinge them right here, and they open up even wider, which is nice. Let's see if I can get that back in there. There we go. Uh, floor jack or scissor jack. I don't have a spare for it, which kind of sucks. Um, my uncle, when he bought it, he put the carpet in it and the plywood. So this floor has really never seen any real work on it. So it's in pretty good shape. Uh, last year, when I got it, the heat wasn't really working. Uh, and the water pump wasn't working very well either. So I put a new water pump and thermostat and fixed the heater in it earlier this year. Uh, when it was still kind of cold out. But over the winter... When it was really cold, I had a, a bunk heater in here for 
one of them Chinese uh, bunk heaters you can buy, diesel parking heaters, I think they're called. Uh, they're just a bunk heater for like a semi in a box. But, you know, hey, I put a hole down here in the floor for the exhaust, and man, I ran, that was my ground wire, and I ran a power cable back here, and I had, I had heat. Not that, well, now I couldn't afford to put that kind of heat in here, but back then, you know, when diesel was cheaper, it was, wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah, I got my crap in here, my normal crap. Shop vacs in here, because I was using it the other day, to, uh, before I went on vacation to clean my Jeep out for a road trip. Uh, yeah, I've got some cleaning stuff over there in those bags, micro cloths and whatnot. <laughs> Boxes of other random crap. Um... Backup camera lights, things uh, for commercial vehicles, stuff like that. Uh, I was going to put one on here. I just haven't got around to figuring out where to mount the monitor because it's bulky. But uh, what else? I mean, not a whole lot. Uh, oh, yeah. Added some insulation up here. Uh, I was planning on insulating the whole thing and then eventually putting wood, like a thin pine board on here. But lumber prices got stupid there for quite a while and they're just now going down so I might come back to this idea but yeah I just stuck I just had some leftover insulation from another project and I started fitting it up in there so I need to go through and finish it back here and and uh, close these in and what because what I want to do is I want to make cabinets back here for for my tools uh, for when I have to go fix something on the road or you know for myself or one of my buddies or you know when my buddies take their cars to the track, you know, we can just load a toolbox and spare in his uh, drag radials in here and stuff like that. That's, I think that'd be cool. Or maybe when I get the Mustang done, kind of the same thing, you know, if I ever decide to put some different, you know, track tires on it or whatever, I load them up in here and, you know, have somebody else drive it to the track for me. Or, hell, this thing might even be able to tow. I, I don't have a re uh, receiver on here yet, but uh, that's a that's a plan possibly depending on if this if I'm comfortable enough towing with this but yeah I'm so happy with those wheels how they came out I probably should have left the wheel weights off but it looks pretty good here's the side door slides open gives you tons of room to get in and out of stuff and uh, all the helicopter seeds from my trees in my front yard that I park under these things are the vein of my assist assistance. Uh, fill up my gutters and you know, my house and getting everything else and all my vehicles and finding their way in the house. Uh, got a light my brother gave me a long time ago. I put it on here a few times when I used to work uh, at one shop. I'd roll up with the lights on and make the guys laugh. And then the front, uh, I painted these with truck bed liner. They're not rusted out, but I wanted to keep them from rusting out because I had a, I, I don't, I wasn't sure when I first bought it or first got it from my uncle. I, I didn't know if it would, uh, if water ever gets stuck here or not, you know, how good these seals were. But I haven't seen any yet, but as a precautionary, I went ahead and painted them. Plus, I think it looks nicer, minus how dirty they are at the moment. But, uh, seats. Don't have captain armrests. I wish they did. I wish they were captain chairs, but they're not. But man, 90s. These 90 seats are awesome. I mean, they they're so easy to clean and keep clean. I mean, I've I don't know. I eat in this thing a lot when I'm driving it for work, and I have you know most things just wipe off. It's great. That material, that, that carpet. I can't remember. I know it was actual carpet brand that made these these uh, fabric tops for these seats. Yeah. Then the, they, they, they stay clean uh, got my deodorant baby powder for swamp weather like we got now you get uh, two plug-ins on this side which is awesome for charging your phone we got one of my charging cables there I don't have my cigarette lighter to USB in here I don't know where it's at um, you don't get a glove box which kind of shocked me when I got this thing um, got an oh shit handle here here regular visors map lights up here uh, I don't know, they're not working. Maybe you gotta have the key on. Um, I'll go around the other side. We'll check out some more of it. But uh, classic '90s reflectors in the door. 
door pockets, really deep door pockets, which makes up for the lack of a glove box. Uh, storage under the seats, a little pair of pajama pants I use for gloves. Close this up. Painted, oh yeah, that's something else I did yesterday that I didn't show anybody. I painted the a couple of these handles. I didn't paint this one because it was still in pretty good shape, but I painted this one and the other side because it was uh, flaky and gross looking. So I figured I would uh, make it look nice. See, here we go. And I, you know, I thought it was regular spray paint until after I was done and I, I forgot I had a, a can of uh, uh, that rubber stuff that you spray on, you can peel off. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. It wasn't the name brand, the, nor the first company I made it. It was, a, it was like a uh, Rust-Oleum Rust version of it. Over here, same thing, reflector, door pockets, get two speakers in this thing that's all you get there's no back speakers which kind of sucks huh there that is for blowing uh, alcohol onto air brake lines through the air tank oh. Oh. nice thing is on the front you get the rubber floor mat which is awesome there's your dog house i have yet to get in there um got a classic tin wood in there uh don't sound good with these speakers these speakers are shot Cubby hole for your cassettes, probably back in the day, or your pack of cigarettes if you smoked. Uh, another cigarette plug-in. The biggest flaw of this, of this van, in my opinion, right here, the, the the separation of the dash, which really sucks. I wish it. I wish they didn't do this, but and I I'm trying to come up with a way to fix it, uh, so it looks halfway decent. I, I'm sure I can probably glue it if I put like a something like a blank like a weighted blanket or something on there kind of like one of them uh yeah you get like one of those lead blankets like you get when you get x-rays put on there to hold it down something something heavy like that maybe like a I don't know, like a like a sheet with uh sand or something in it to really weigh it down and then maybe i can glue it oh uh, down here you get a storage compartment some napkins because you know naturally I, I, i've eaten a lot of lunches in here the original yeah, let's go ahead and pull this out. I'm pretty sure this is the original owner's manual. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Original owner's manual. Boom. I love, I love, especially 90s owner's manuals. They were, they had their presentation, well, if they were good ones obviously there's some that are really bland you know that's where my uncle bought it from Pontiac oh, yeah well we know we know what happened to Pontiac the way of the dinosaurs what else so we got a warranty card up here 99 I love that gold that's the first time actually I've, I think I've ever opened it look at that uh, we got dad driving two kids in the seat the one seat can't do that. That's a no-no. Oh, uh, you gotta wear your seatbelt around your, you know, around the front of your chest. That's a no-no there too. It's cool stuff. One of my favorite owner's manuals that I had was in my '77 Dodge because they had some really cool stuff in the back, like accessories, like the Mopar uh, car seat. For your kid i can only imagine how safe that thing was for back in the day i, don't, I wonder who made it for him I'd, I'd like to see one of those in person yeah look at that more together I'll take that one in the house oh got my toothbrush down in there for those emergency toothbrush situations probably got a thing of toothpaste in there too uh still got the original cigarette lighter here somebody used it a few times not i though I don't smoke, but there you go. Um, look at all that crud down there. Wasp. Ah, damn it, wasp. Oh, the headliner's in really nice shape. It's not sagging yet. Soft to the touch. Um, I guess we can show off under the very small hood what we got here. Vortec, you got the V6 in here, uh, what would that be, 
4.3 Vortec. And I tell you what, I've had a lot of Vortex over the of uh, the, the six owner variants. Those were man, that those were pretty pretty good engines, man. I have I've had little or no issues with these uh, Vortec engines, especially these later model ones. I I love them. That mid the late 90s i mean those things pack a hell of a punch and they just they just keep running man i mean this thing doesn't smoke doesn't burn it off anything the only problem i have is i got an oxygen sensor that's bad in it but it really doesn't cause much for drivability issues um it just every once in a while it, it kind of quivers between second and third gear uh this is a three speed automatic if i remember i don't know if there's an overdrive but real honestly at highway speeds this thing just is like riding on a couch man this thing's so smooth uh there's the fuse panel box which the lid fell off i, I gotta put that tape back you know a piece of tape put on there because it doesn't like to stay um never mind that power wire that was for my heater that i my bunk heater I had back there uh the thing i like about these seats are they kind of remind me of the commercial truck seats uh for uh not like not like the big semi not like semi seats but for like uh well some of them but like the ones that had the fixed seats that don't don't go up and down uh they don't have the air suspension on them you know you got a nice little cubby spot right there where you can shove stuff and there's a bar back there so it keeps it from flying back when you're accelerating you know because got all that power in this bad boy but yeah there you go i mean that's that's it there ain't nothing else to her no back seats, no nothing, no interior back there. Just what my uncle put down and all my crap that fell down back there. And that's it. Oh, for you 90s Chevy guys, you got the heart monitor. Flatline. <laughs> well, start her up so you can hear it. Uh, it's got that classic uh, fuel pump whine that you can hear you can definitely hear it back there it's like uh with the fuel tank back there it's kind of like an echo chamber back there you can really when you're sitting back there when this thing's running you can just hear the whine for days let me close this door but yeah i mean you can hear it's quiet smooth don't sound too bad it still has a factory exhaust on it um i haven't done anything local favorite right here gotta, gotta get you you ever come out this this part of Illinois you gotta get you a ski or go down to your local Dairy King and get you a real ski uh, cherry ski or strawberry ski soda oh man that's it right there but anywho that's it man I just want to show show y'all what it uh, what it looks like in here and you know maybe we'll do some drive videos sometime uh, if I get some GoPros or something or bring a cell phone mount in here I'll mount my cell phone and take it down the road and so you can hear what it sounds like uh, you definitely get some road noise in this thing in the back with no interior at uh, a lot of you can hear the gravel hitting the fender wells things of that nature but uh, it's not bad honestly uh, the wind noise isn't too bad when it rains you definitely hear it but when I put that insulation up it really cut back on that so when I finish it I think that'll help out a lot I do plan on maybe taking this on, I don't live too far from a bunch of campgrounds, so I might take this out, me and the kiddo, and maybe the father-in-law, that we were all talking about going camping one, sometime this summer, so I might might throw a blow-up mattress in here and bring the portable AC unit and get a lot with some power and you know, camp out of the back of this thing and have AC and a blow-up mattress and be comfortable and not sweat your butt off like I am right now, because it's, humidity's high right now and summer's definitely here but uh yeah all righty later guys